Good evening. Welcome to the halfway week service. So good to see everyone tonight. Let's all take our song book and open number 314. Number 314. 314. In your song book, and let's all stand together. We'll sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. Number 314. Good evening. Welcome. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain. see each and every one of you here tonight. Uh, we need to be praying for our pastor as he travels, amen, to see our uh, kids at camp, amen. That sounds exciting, don't it? And uh, anyway, if you're a first-time visitor here tonight, uh, could you just raise your hand if you've never been here to Mass and Baptist Temple uh, or you haven't been here for a long time? Uh, well, anyway, we do have some welcoming packages here on the welcoming desk here right past this door, and then you can feel free to take one, amen. Also, um, <clears throat> Uh, we want to make sure also that black box is where we, we do not do offerings anymore. So this black box right here is where you put your tithes and offerings and so that God can ble richly bless you and God can, his work can continue here in Mass of Baptist Temple. Amen. So let's pray. Father in heaven, once again, I want to thank you what you're going to accomplish in this church, Father, with those who are surrendered to you. Father, I pray tonight that, Father, as we give, Father, uh, you would bless the gift and the giver. And Father, I pray, Lord, that this work and this ministry will continue till you come. Father, I want to thank you for these things. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, the pastor and I both are agreeing that up here we're missing the fans. You know, we had the fans. and you know the pulpit over there has a fan in it? it has two fans. We're missing those fans tonight, but uh, it's, it's warm and dry up here. Number 315, number 315, well, some of us are wet, too. <laughs> number 315, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Number 315. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is
317. Right across the page, another page over, 317. Let's sing this chorus this evening. I am blessed. I am blessed every day. This evening is so good to see everyone. Make everyone feel welcome and the blessing of the Lord. Get that in the handshake this evening. Sing that chorus once again, one more time this evening. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Every day that I live, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. Thank you. May be seated. We have a special need this evening, so we've asked Ron Fry to present with us something very, very special. Listen closely to this need. All right. I wanted to bring up my hard hat here, and um, I don't know if you uh, realize this, but uh, we're starting to build something back again together, and uh, it's exciting. Uh, I hope that you're starting to get that excited feeling, that excited spirit, um, and uh, we got some needs around the church, and um, we wanted to uh, come to you and just uh, kind of talk to you a little bit as a church of uh, one of the main needs that we're looking at right now, and uh, one of the great things that I've, I've seen in churches and in our church is when we have a building project and uh, people get behind it, uh, participate in it. Uh, get to see it, see it through, and uh, just take that ownership. And we have a specific need, and that need is for our new pastor. Uh, our new pastor, they are living in the uh, girls' dorm uh, downstairs. Um, they're kind of crammed in t into a missionary um, uh, apartment. Uh, they, they cannot stay over at the other side where uh, uh, the Deckers were living, which is a lot bigger, a lot, of area, a lot more area, because there's no power to that building. And we're still having electrical problems there. So we want to get them into parsonage. Uh, that being said, I hope some of you came up there and actually saw the parsonage. Uh, the parsonage has not been updated. Uh, the parsonage has a lot of needs. Um, and we would like to get the, 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 uh, the butlers in there um, as soon as possible. We're looking at hopefully uh, at the end of July. Uh, but we got to get some work done before then. Um, and we're not talking... Uh, we're talking flooring, um, drywall repair, painting. Uh, the whole thing needs painted. 
Uh, there's some other bigger projects that, that will need to be done uh, later on, uh, but uh, Pastor uh, Butler, uh, they just want to get moved in, and we can do some of those other repairs as we, as we get going. So our need is for uh, some of the, for the flooring, uh, drywall repair, painting, and uh, some bathroom repair. Uh, some of the toilets don't work. Uh, some of the sinks are barely hanging on. Um, so we're definitely gonna have some plumbing, uh, plumbing repair as well. So I know that we just had a, 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 a great goal for the Christian school and I wanna thank you church for, for what you have done. I'm excited for my kids to be going again this year and um, here to ask for some more. <laughs> um, we need your help. Um, what we're looking for is uh, about $5,000 um, for a budget to get everything, um, the painting, the drywall repair, um, the uh, flooring, and uh, bathroom repair. Um, also, some of the closets, uh, some of the closets, uh, the rods and stuff like that are falling apart, so we'll, we'll put some new rods in there. We just want to be able to get them in there, and um, we want to take care of our pastor. Um, and again, this, this, the person is just, I mean, we got, we got pink counters in the kitchen. Um, we've got the seventies and some of you know that the seventies colors in the bathrooms. Um, we're not, uh, we're not looking at replacing all that yet. Um, it will need to be, um, we need to take pride in our parsonage. Now we haven't had a pastor in a parsonage for a long time. And I still remember going up and visiting Mrs. Cummins up there and, um, and you know, it was, it was fantastic, but it's been worn down. So I'm going to leave my helmet here. This is my, my army construction helmet. I don't need it right now. So I'm going to leave it up here and I want you to be praying about this. What we're looking for is today, um, this coming Sunday, is if you would just pray on what you could give um, for uh, updating the parsonage. Again, we have a goal of $5,000. Um, IOUs are okay. Um, we're going to hand, uh, we'll, well, we have the um, envelopes up here. So if you take the envelopes and actually you wanna, we're going to go ahead and hand out the envelopes. We just ask you to pray about it. Um, if you don't have the money, put an IOU on there of what you could, uh, what could you could give uh, for our pastor and his family and what we can do for updating the parsonage. Uh, there's some other major needs uh, of the parsonage, uh, including the deck. Uh, the, the handrail is very, very sketchy right now, and uh, I wouldn't recommend the kids going out there, so we're going to lock that up for now. Um, that is going to be another project down the road, uh, but we want to get them in. And we want to get them into a parsonage where uh, when they have, they have family over, they, have, uh, they entertain missionaries, that it's not an embarrassment. All right? And uh, so that's, that's where I'm at. Uh, that's where we're at as a church. I'm speaking for all of the, uh, the officers of the church that uh, I just want to encourage you and uh, get part of it. And here's the best thing. We want you to give, but there's also going to be opportunities for you to get your hands dirty a little bit, too, if you want to. So we'll have, we'll have some opportunities, and we'll let you know as we're, as we're scheduling that. But we would love to have you come up and maybe even just help us clean, help us... Uh, get some of that old flooring out into the dumpster or whatever. Um, one of the great things about a church build and a building project is when we can all get behind it. And so um, I, let's go ahead and uh, I'd like to have a word of prayer and pray for this, uh, this uh, goal. And, and um, uh, I would just I'd ask you to seriously consider giving and uh, praying about that. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house again. We thank you for uh, our pastor, we thank you for bringing uh, our pastor and his family to us. Uh, Lord, I just pray that uh, uh, you would continue to uh, help us to be a uh, strong giving church uh, for you and for your ministry, Lord. And we just pray for this goal that we would be able to update the parsonage and that you would just help each one of us to be able to um, to, to uh, see what we can give, how we can get behind this, this project and uh, get it accomplished. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I'm going to leave this up here Maybe during the message. You know, be thinking of it. What can you do to help? And again, uh, please put it in the, the the box here, the IOUs. Thank you. Yes, we can take that money as as often as you want to give that. Amen. So there is a, a lime green carpet. Okay, it's not this color. It's. It, it, didn't even, it would be nice if it were this color, but there's just things that need updated. And so Miss Hannah Butler, she's going to uh, pick the color 
and all the, all the walls are painted the, the same color. They want just want a, just a nice nice tone color in there for that. So so that that paint and uh, that'll be that painting will be done next week. So if anybody's interested, we have some painters in the church that are interested in that. Uh, please come and see me. Uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, to, or Ron, or, or even uh, Paul Weaver, so make sure we're, we can schedule that. Obviously, no work is done this week because uh, they're at camp, but next week when, when the butlers are here, we want to make sure that we uh, work them with them. Okay, So that's next Monday through Friday at the Parsonage. If anybody's interested in that, we'll give you some times and all that. Uh, but that's basically your schedule, what you're available. Uh, if you would, please take your prayer bulletin there. That's in front of you there. And if you hadn't, didn't get one, did you raise your hand if you don't have a prayer bulletin? Make sure... You get a prayer bulletin. They're over there at the, the, the welcome table as we come in each each and every service. And this this Wednesday, the June 19th, uh, we have these special prayer requests. We have June 17th through the 21st. Right now is the junior and senior camp. I've seen some pictures of the revival. The grounds down at Mount Salem down there, and the the uh, building is full. The chapel's full. A lot of, a lot of teenagers there this week. In their combined week, junior and senior camp this week, and I think they had, well, I'm not sure how many churches they had there, but uh, it's a good, good amount of campers, pretty full week for them, and of course, we want to pray for this Sunday, and we're going to have, after the evening service, we'll have our morning service at 10, 11, and 6, after the 6 o'clock service Sunday night, we'll have a teen uh, bonfire there, that'll be at the, uh, over at the college area, so that gate will be open for you, and you can attend that after the evening service, and uh, the the heat, <laughs> the heat exhaustion may still be here, but at least the heat will be gone. So Sunday night would be might be a refreshing night to be uh, at the uh, at the bonfire there at the afterglow. And I'll remind you that uh, June 30th, coming up just uh, a week from Sunday, is the Lord's su- service, and that'll be uh, Lord's supper after the evening service on Sunday the, the 30th. And also, don't forget, make this make sure it's on the calendar. We have our cookout, our Mass and Baptist Temple. Our, our uh, yearly church cookout will be on the 6th, uh, that Saturday, uh, July the 6th. And uh, several things to pray for. We have our list of our campers there, listed there. Remember RJ, Avery Fry, Ray Fry, Sarah Davison, Isaac, Matthew Ash, Melinda Ferris, Jonathan Weaver, Sidney Smith, and of course Pastor Butler. Be in prayer for them as they're at camp. They return from camp on Friday around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Also pray for MCS and more students there. You can see that's listed there. And we also need to make sure we're, uh, we had that good push for the the opening of the school. Now we need to push for more students. So pray for that and and for the teachers there at the Christian school. Also we have coming up July the 11th. There's a sign up here over at the welcome table is July the 11th is the trip, the annual trip to Cleveland Baptist and leaving the church there July the 11th at 7.45, and make sure you sign up before that on July the 7th on that Sunday there. Again, uh, you can see the Lord's Supper there listed. We did have a, a passing of a, a dear friend of ours, Inez Fletcher. Uh, Inez, uh, Inez passed away, and just be in prayer for the family. There are no um, calling hours or no funeral posted on the Pacalay website, but uh, just be in prayer for uh, the Fletcher family. Of course, that's the Knoblox as well, and... Um, Think of her husband, Don. Uh, that car that they have, I, I imagine it probably has f- about 450,000 miles on that car that uh, he would take her every day on that trip. Uh, so, so be in prayer for the Fletcher family. Also remember these, these great Sunday school departments that we have, the workers here, faithful workers, and looking at so many here that have been so faithful. Thank you for that. Uh, thank the Lord for our nursery, and Charlotte Olam, Melinda Ferris, and Susan Pike. Our newest addition is Mrs. Hannah Butler. Also, I want to pray for the toddler department, Mrs. Sharon Schaup, Mrs. Carolyn Unruh, and Miss Natalie Weaver. Uh, soon to be married here in, what, uh, 80, 80 something days? Is that right, 80? She's, she's not here tonight, but it, she would give us the numbers. I'm not sure, but it's in the 80s, I think. Also, be in prayer for the beginner department, Mrs. Mary Ferris, Mr. Jim Ferris, and also Miss Melinda Ferris. Of course, Melinda's at camp. Pray for the primary department, uh, Mrs. Sue Ellinger and Mrs. Nancy Patterson and Mr. Mitch Ellinger. And in the junior department, Reverend Larry Patterson, Mr. Bill Keenan, Mrs. C. Denise Patterson, and Mr. and Mrs. Don Fowler, and Mr. Jeffrey Schaup. 
and bring in prayer for our teens and growth in our team ministry as well, Mr. and Mrs. Ron Fry, Mr. and Mrs. Paul Weaver, and of course our adult Sunday school class with Pastor Corbin Butler right here in the 10 o'clock service, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Ernie and Manoka Brown in the Spanish ministry, ministry. and uh, we would say Violeta and Ernesto, <laughs> Violeta and Ernesto, por favor. On the back side, there are some prayer requests here that we need to pray for each and every week. And that's, of course, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We know the, the trouble that's taking place and, and there in Hamas and the things that they're dealing with. And so be a prayer for Jerusalem, and not just uh, Jerusalem, but Jews around the world as well, as they return back to Jerusalem. And that's a prophecy to be fulfilled. Also pray for the labors. We need labors. Pray that the Lord would send forth labors in the harvest. And... Uh, the 4,000 languages that are without a Bible. Be in prayer for our own unsaved loved ones that we have, friends, unspoken requests, uh, souls to be saved, our church leaders, our church members, and ministries of the uh, church, the school, and the college. Our CD ministries, radio, and internet ministries are very active every service. We're so thankful for those workers, thankful for those who are watching online on our YouTube channels and things like that. Thank you so much, workers, for your hard work to make sure this stuff runs smoothly. Praying for our nation, our President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Governor Mike DeWine in the, in the state of Ohio, Mayor Jamie Slutes and Maslin, and the various government officials here that are local, state, and also federal. I want to pray for our missionary sent out of the Mass Baptist Temple, Reverend Arza and Ruth Brown, Reverend Ernie and Manoka Brown, Reverend Kenny and Cindy Chapman, Reverend David and Diane Cummins, Reverend Tim and Betty Hawkins, Miss Ruth Mickle, Reverend Seth and Michaela, and they'll be joining us here, I believe, in our missions conference coming up. Also, Reverend Bill and Sharon Smith, Miss Ashley Taylor. It's exciting to see some pictures in South Africa of things that are going on in their various Bible schools that are taking place there, as well as pray for Dr. Jerry and Dreama Whitlow. And they're serving in California. I didn't list the locations where they're serving, but be in prayer for them and their, their locations. Also be in prayer for Pastor, uh, Pastor Larry Emery and his wife Diane as well. And uh, we'll have some various prayer requests. So if we could pass the microphone this evening. And uh, see, Luke, would you come and get that for us? Make sure we get it. We have some missionaries of the week that we're going to pray for. The World Baptist Fellowship Office in Arlington, Texas. Reverend David and Diane Cummins in the ministry and the Spanish work in Texas. The Roloff Homes, that's taking place in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, Reverend Rex and Mary Cobb in Bowie, Texas. And also Reverend Larry and Regina McKinney in Tacoma, Washington. Our pastor of the week is uh, Pastor Mark O'Donnell, and he's the pastor of Community Baptist Church in Akron, Ohio. And Community Baptist Church is where the old Carousel Dinner Theater is many years ago. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful church building, and things are going on, taking place there. They have many men's conferences and women's conferences throughout the year as well. And be in prayer for continually with Lighthouse Baptist Temple, Pastor Hirschberger there. And then we have these additional requests we want to pray for, those with uh, cancer, those with physical needs. We have Valerie DeLong, Elizabeth Simmers, Michelle Snyder, Pastor Jerry Ross, Chuck Nidro, Herb Rarick, Nikki Percival, Pastor Tim Mishler, Amanda Fisher, Dixie Booth, Stephanie Clark, Mara Sampson, George Miller, Kevin Mosley, Don Boss, and Roger Bucklew. Remember these with cancer and then these with physical needs. Uh, Eliana with a double limb transplant, this 15 year old. Vern Holman, liver transplant. Miguel Ricio with a kidney and also Emery uh, Dunnerstick, this is Vi's granddaughter. Uh, Pastor Doria C. Davison was in hospital two weeks ago, two weeks, yeah, two days last week, I should say. And again, uh, today in the hospital, just some physical needs there. John Lightfoot, Lightfoot Jr., Norma Gardner, Jim Amenhauser, Stella Stringer, uh, Michael, Michael uh, Campbell and Altman, this is Vi's sister who had the recent surgery and Pat and Kenny Price, and also Blanche Schutte, the physical need there. This prayer request came in this evening with um, 
Brother, Ash, uh, Brother Caleb and Miss Ashley, their friend in need of a kidney, a kidney transplant. So be in prayer for these uh, physical needs there. At this time, we have the microphone out. We're going to see if there's any prayer needs. So if you just raise your hand, if you have anything you want to pray for. And at this time, we'll make sure that you get a chance to tell us, please. Hi. Cliff. I, I need your prayers. Uh, I have trouble with staff and skin. I know other people are so wicked and mean and nasty. And they're trying to take the rule of my life. And, and I pray that God will get a hold of them. And I don't want to be a burden to anybody. I don't want to say anything that's going to cause problems. And I pray that God will make a way that there's the only way I know. I just, I hope and pray that God will make a way that I do get to go to the Cleveland Clinic and stay up there for two whole months to a year. I want these issues to be taken care of. And if yes. not, I pray that God will be done. And I, uh, sometimes I just have problems with them and I don't know what to do. I can't say anything because it cause problems. Yeah, Cliff will so be. So please yeah. pray for me. I appreciate your will. Definitely are. We are praying for you. And we're glad that you're here this evening and just pray for, for Cliff there. I know as, as you have people that, uh, uh, have you know take, do things that maybe against you just remember this phrase as for me and my house we will serve the Lord no matter what happens in my life in first Peter 5 7 cast your care upon the Lord casting all your care upon him for he careth for you any other prayer requests yes Blanche yes I just want to say I am blessed Amen. and I am having surgery a week from Friday for my broken arm yes. and uh, I appreciate your prayers Thank you for your years of faithfulness to being praying for Blanche there. Yes. Just wanted to mention that Mrs. Emery has not been doing well physically. Uh, she needs quite a bit of prayer right now, and Brother Emery as well. And also, uh, my great niece, Chelsea Toll, Lenny and Amy's daughter in law, is uh, expecting a child, she and Michael, and she's having complications with the pregnancy and asked that we would lift her up in prayer. Or Michael and Chelsea Toll, yes. and the baby to come, hopefully soon, yes? There for a while we had my great niece, which was my sister's granddaughter, on the prayer list. She had cancer. Well, I got good news yesterday. July the 5th is her last chemo. Hey, and amen. So she's, she's doing good. That's great. And what, what's her name again? Claire Gantz. Claire Gantz, okay. Those are good reports, amen. Give the Lord praise for those. I have a prayer for the church. My daughter is in Virginia, and uh, her husband was saved quite a while back. In fact, they were coming here for a while before they moved to Virginia. And uh, they changed churches, just they thought that's what the Lord wanted them to do, and things weren't going well, so they got this other church. Things are going real good. And today, the pastor of that church, and she checked with them to see if they were uh, uh, King James Version, you know, Bible believing and all that stuff. And uh, everything was fine. He said, yeah, they're fundamental. They're doing all these things. He came to the church today, said they did a background check, found out that her husband had a felony from 20 years ago and that they were her and her child could come to their church, but they didn't want him to ever come back again. Now that's really done something for two young people that he hasn't been saved that long. Mm -hmm. And and for them to do that to him, and now they're, they're just kind of broken. And I told him, just be glad you found it now. Let the Lord lead you to a good church. It, just, just let the Lord handle it. They have to pay for that. Don't you get bitter or anything. So I think the church needs to pray for them and that other church. I don't even know the name of the other church. Mm -hmm. But uh, to go back 20 years, that just doesn't seem right. I mean, what are you going to do with somebody that's a felon that just got out of jail? Is he going to die and go to hell because he's not allowed in your church? 
you know, it just don't seem right. So we need a lot of prayer on the, that church and also for my daughter and her husband. Yeah, so pray, pray for the shepherds of the flock. Pray for many many pastors. You know, there's a lot of target. I just put I just put a target right there. You know, just a reminder that, that there's a target on every one of us that claim Christ. And so um, there's a man I told to talk to yesterday at Home Depot. I said, are you ready to go? He said, he's, going, he's a Christian. I said, are you ready to go? Make sure you're ready. You know, make sure we're all ready because the uh, Lord's coming back real soon. Amen. Take us all, all these problems away. All those problems are going to be gone. Any uh, other prayer requests this evening? Bless you. All right, let's go, Lord, in prayer this evening. Pray for these requests faithfully in your prayers for the next seven days. Would you commit to do that? Pray for these requests, right? Let's go, Lord, in prayer this evening. Father, we thank you so much for your rich blessings, Lord. We thank you for our church, Lord, and what you brought us from, where we're at now. We pray that you just bless the, the projects here coming up and just, just bless this ministry. Thank you for the, the leadership and the guidance that you have uh, shown us and provided for us, Lord. We're so so grateful. We do pray for our, our youth and our young people at uh, camp this week. Lord, right now, we pray that in this evening service at Mount Salem right now, you just just show up, Lord, and, and take take control and ro total ro rule, rule and reign in, in these kids and right here in this service as well tonight. We pray you just meet, meet us in the, in the midst of, of, of us, Lord, we pray. We pray for the Fletcher family and loss of loved ones and just others of lost loved ones. We pray that you would comfort their hearts, Lord, and provide for the need. Uh, we, Lord, we pray that you would be with the uh, Sunday school departments and our church, Lord, and, and our faithful workers, Lord. Thank you for their their blessings and, and all that they have done through the, the years and just uh, their faithfulness today. And help them, we pray, in their preparation for Sunday and for the, the messages that they teach and, and many that will preach. Lord, we pray that you just bless uh, the, the Sunday school and, and bring many children to our, our, our church, Lord. Look for, looking forward to the August date of our vacation Bible school, and, and we just pray for our bus restart coming up at the end of the July and into August. We pray that you just bless uh, the ministry. Help us, Lord, as we, each of us would maybe take a new endeavor, something we haven't done. Maybe somebody hasn't gone soul winning. This would be a great chance to, to start something new or just to get back at it. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you would just save souls and, and that are lost. Lord, thank you for those who, that we can come in contact with that know Christ. And we pray that you'd help us not to be um, shy or worried or fearful about sharing our faith, but to, to, have, to have total obedience to, to go and, and give the gospel. As we were mentioned on, on Sunday, to g give out that good news and help us, Lord, we pray, to continue to be faithful in that. Lord, we do pray for our missionaries and just thank you so much for their their love for you. And I pray you help them with the discouragement that they face and uh, some of physical needs and, and just uh, financial needs. I pray that you just bless these and help them, Lord, and, and encourage them. Help us to find out what they need. We can be more of a strength and support to them. Lord, we pray that your, your will will be done in their lives. And we pray for Mrs. Emery, Lord, just, just touch her body and bring her healing and help restoration and, and just uh, restore her to, to full health and be with Pastor Emery and, and just watch over uh, them and, and just guide them in the, in the steps that you have for them. Uh, Pastor McConnell and uh, we pray for Pastor Hirschberger, and of course Pastor Butler. We pray that you minister to these men or they uh, are the, the, the shepherds leading the flock and, and, and there is the, the devil that's targeting them but Lord we pray that you would just help them to stand strong for you Lord, thank you for um, answered prayer that we have this evening with that with uh, without cancer and Claire uh, against getting that good report. And we pray that you just bless uh, these with cancer and help them to um, continue to fight or help them also to be able to rest and to recover so they can continue to go on. And I pray that you just bless the, the chemotherapy sessions and the radiation and help them, I pray, in this time. I pray for those who have these many physical needs and and uh, we pray you just minister to each and every one. There was one with the need of a kidney transplant. Uh, provide that. Uh, uh, even those with a heart transplant, Lord, those are facing various uh, surgeries and, and, and pending surgeries. We pray you just help and encourage them. And Lord, you know the, the needs. We do miss Stella not being with us in church. We pray you just help her to get back to 
back to the church. Lord, Mrs. Price, absent again this evening, we pray you just help them to, to recover and, Lord, guide in, in their lives, Lord. And we pray that you be with uh, Cliff, Lord, his, his need of uh, going to Cleveland Clinic to give the gospel out there and, and help the people around him to be kind to him and help him to respond, Lord, we pray, to their, their needs. And we pray that you be with this little baby, uh, the tolls that would come into this world uh, healthy, and, and we pray your blessing upon mom, and, and uh, just thank you for, for, for the, your, your guidance in, in our little ones. And we pray that you just meet the needs of, of our camp this week, especially be with the campers and, and um, give them safety as they travel home Friday. But Lord, help it just to be a good, uh, refreshing time and, and a time that the souls that are lost would know Christ as their Savior and not return back the same. But Lord, help them to be changed. Help us all to be changed in our hearts, our lives. Lord, thank you for your guidance and your direction. But Lord, help us to be faithful in it. Lord, we know we do have a target on us, but Lord, we pray that you'd help us to rise above uh, the sin, the, the world, the devil, and our flesh, and to, Lord, be, be Christ-like in our spirit, in our words, our actions. Lord, be Christ-like in everything we do and say. We pray you minister to, to these needs, and all of us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. brought some napkins up here so <laughs> I got a little hot I got cooled off there while I was sitting and uh, you know anyway good to see everyone here tonight I'm glad to be here it is a hot evening isn't it it's sultry and uh, I remember being in Las Vegas it could be over 100 degrees and it feel like it's 70s and uh, because there's no humidity and uh, I at one point I got dehydrated because you don't recognize because it's cooler uh, and it feels cooler in those states uh, I was stationed at Nellis Air Force Base, but I never worked at Nellis. I flew over Mount Charleston to a test range uh, uh, for the stealth fighter. Okay, so anyway, I could tell you that now. Okay, my wife for four years did not know what I was doing. Amen. So anyway, uh, tonight, I want us to go into Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, and if you're able... Let's stand for the reading of the text, if we will, tonight, if you're able. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. After two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the, the box and poured it on his head. And there, was, and there was some of the indignation within themselves and said, Why was this a waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For if ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. And she hath done what she could, and she has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, where, whosoever, where, where whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of her, a memorial of her. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for the message tonight. I pray, Lord, it would speak in the hearts and lives of men and women tonight. Father, help us be encouraged, Father, for what this woman did. And that, Father, we can uh, sacrifice of love and, uh, and worship, Father, toward you, Father, with our, uh, our lives, our income, our treasure, and every aspect of our lives. Help us put you first in our lives. Father, I want to thank you for each and every one here, Father. I pray the Holy Spirit will work in the hearts of minds uh, of men and women here tonight, Father, and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, <clears throat> you may be seated. We have come to a sad chapter uh, in the book of Mark. These, uh, these verses display the hatred of men and all its ugliness. According to verse, uh, verses 1 and 2, the religious Jews were fed up with Jesus because of His preaching. Uh, I'll give you a reference in Matthew 23. If you haven't read that, you can hear Jesus scathing preaching against the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And he called them serpents, blind guides, and he says, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? That made them angry. And he overturned the money changers and the booths, which cost them a lot of money, uh, the scribes and Pharisees, and they were mad at Jesus Christ. I say they were materialistic, they were phonies, and, uh, and that's why they were angry, because he exposed them. All right? <clears throat> They want to see him dead, and they do not care what they have to do to see that come to pass. Now, verse 1 says they wanted to take him by craft. You know what that means? Trickery. Okay, the word crafter means trickery or by, by a trick. They are trying to devise a plot to trap Jesus so they can have him executed. Boy, do they try. But, you know, Jesus is the Son of God. He's the King of kings, Lord of lords. He's the God uh, a second person of the Trinity, and I'm going to say this right now, you can't fool Jesus Christ. Amen. He was never taken by craft. All right? But they tried because they hated Him. Now, while this passage reveals human nature at its worst, there's also a picture here of human nature at its best. Jesus contrasts the hatred of His enemies against the unconditional love of of the one of his precious saints, Mary of Bethany. Amen. These verses paint a portrait of sacrificial love. Our text this evening is about the kind of sacrifice uh, that, uh, that's supposed to mark the life of every believer in this room. It's the kind of sacrifice uh, talked about by men like Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, the context, Jesus is on His way to Calvary. Uh, he goes to a woman, expressed the depths of her love and devotion to Him by a costly sacrifice. Her labor of love is misunderstood by others, but is commended by the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, He tells those around Him that she has done all she could and that her sacrifice would be remembered and rehearsed forever. In fact, tonight, folks, and I'm going to say it, in fact, I am fulfilling Bible prophecy tonight. Amen? I am going to preach in memorial to this lady. Jesus prophesied that over 2,000 years ago, and we are going to see that tonight. Amen? It's going to be fulfilled. Amen? So, continue. I want <clears throat> also... I want us to look at the passage for a few minutes this evening. And as we do, I want us to consider the thought, she hath done what she could. She has done what she could. And as we think about the sacrifice she made for the Lord, we need to ask ourselves the question, have we? Have we done what we could for Him? Have we given all that there is to give? Notice three areas we're going to look at tonight. She did what she could. And as we do, search your own hearts tonight and see if you have that in your heart also. Verse uh, 3 and 4, in the area of sacrifice, uh, back in 3 and 4, uh, it says this, And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Okay, and, uh, and <clears throat> verse 4 says, There were some that had indignation within themselves, okay, and they said, Why was this a waste of the ointment made? Now, I tell you something, how can they have the audacity? And I know we can see things 2020 as we look back, and we know who Jesus is as believers, you know, but the disciples didn't so much. Something was wrong with them. You know, Jesus would preach over and over again about the death, burial, and resurrection that He was going to take place, but they didn't seem like they understood it or they didn't want to understand it because they still believed that Jesus 
was going to overthrow the Romans and, uh, and then take over Jerusalem and be king of kings, lord of lords there in Jerusalem. All right, that's what they thought. Okay, he is the Messiah, but that's not his plan. He was to come, and Matthew, 6, Matthew 16 talks about uh, that he was going to do that. And when Peter rebuked Jesus, Jesus says, Get thee hence behind me, Satan. Okay, because of the gospel had to be completed, and they still didn't seem to understand. Even at this point in this uh, passage of scripture, they didn't seem to understand, save one person Mary of Bethany. Now, you've heard about her, haven't you? Uh, she, was, uh, she was a lady in Martha, uh, Lazarus, and, uh, uh, and Mary, Mary's house. They were friends. Jesus frequented that place. And uh, she was sitting at Jesus' feet. Amen. She wanted to hear every little word that he had to say, didn't he? And Mary kind of got mad in there. Well, she was serving God, too. She was cleaning up after this dinner, you know, after she fed Christ. Amen. But however, Jesus says, Mary, Mary. You see, she wanted, Mary wanted to hear every little word and didn't want to miss anything because she loved the Lord Jesus. Now, another part, uh, you see, uh, another area was seeing that her brother was Lazarus, okay, Martha and Mary, okay, was her si uh, Lazarus sisters uh, that uh, Mary saw and Martha saw her brother resurrected from the dead. She had a lot to be thankful for, didn't she? But even before all this, she was still at the feet of Jesus. She loved Jesus even before Lazarus died. And she still loved Jesus after he rose again. Amen. So this Mary, I just love this lady that's recorded in the Word of God. Amen. I think we, we, when we see her tonight, we're going to be certainly blessed of this lady from Bethany. Okay. Um, <clears throat> she did what she could, didn't she? Now, verses 3 and 4, the setting for the, this demonstration and sacrifice that, that she has done is that these events took place in the little town of Bethany, as I was mentioning. It's located about the southern slope of the Mount of Olives, okay, just a few miles from Jerusalem. Bethany was a favorite location for Jesus. He was a very good friend who lived there. These friends were siblings of their names, were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, as I mentioned. Jesus also visited them in their home and benefited from their hospitality, Luke chapter 10 Verse 38 and 42. It was also Lazarus that died and brought back to life by the Lord Jesus in John chapter 11. So Bethany was a special place for the Lord Jesus Christ, wasn't it? We're also told that this event occurred in the home of a man called Simon the leper. Okay, it would appear that this man had been healed from leprosy by Jesus and throws a feast in the Lord's honor to thank him for what he has done in his life. If the Lord has ever done anything for you, uh, you will be thankful for it, won't you? If he has done something for you, you'll be thankful for it. If he hasn't done anything, you probably wouldn't be a thankful person at all. You see, I believe those that Jesus does some things for, you have some serious gratitude, amen, to who he is. So this man's heart, I believe, was overflowing with love and gratitude for what Jesus has done for him. And he wants to thank him and praise him uh, for uh, the Lord, for those people who are excited about what the Lord has done for them. Okay, we ought to be the same way, don't you think? We're told in John's account that the same event that Martha is there serving Lazarus, uh, whom Jesus raised from the dead, and there also was Mary. In fact, it is Mary who performs this extravagant sacrificial love for the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. So that's another parallel passage of the Gospels, okay? However, I like to imagine that she broke the vessel so she might extract every drop of ointment for the use on our Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of the reason, one thing is clear. Mary gave all she had to Jesus for His glory. I wonder... Have we broken the alabaster box of our lives and poured out ourselves every drop for him? This is the thought occupied the mind of Paul when he faced his own death in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Um, let's, look for that. let's look at that real quick. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. It says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept 
the faith. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not for me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Now we should look at our own lives and ask ourselves, if we have given everything, and we have and are to him, Mary's sacrifice was the ultimate expression of her love and worship for our Lord Jesus. She gave it all she had. She had placed everything we are on the altar for Him. You know, have you ever thought of that? Have you ever put everything on the altar for the Lord? So we've seen that she has done all that she could in the area of sacrifice. Now I'm going to define just a little bit later just how much that, that ointment may have cost. Okay, but in verse 8, I, want to, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So, secondly, in verse 8, it talks about the area of service. She did what she could in the area of service. She had, done, um, she had done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. So, he was, she was servicing our Lord Jesus Christ because she knew some stuff about Jesus that everybody else was denying, you see. Jesus' statement here, the expression that she, she did what she could, refers to all her possessions, all that she possessed. There were many things that Mary could not do for Jesus, but this, in, in anointing him with a, an expensive box of costly ointment, she was giving him all that she had. Her service was absolute. Did you know once you open that bottle, you can't close it back up? You have to break it open. And when you break it open, it's absolute. It's not going back in. You better use it all. You see, that's the way our life is. When the critics started wagging their tongues and Jesus told them that what Mary had done was respond to once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the Lord, verse 7 in our text, in verse 7, um, He says this, For we have the poor with you always, and whosoever ye will do them good, but me ye have not always. I believe, verse 7, first of all, I just cannot, it's such an audacity to think that who Jesus is, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Somebody anoints his head and, and blesses the Lord Jesus, and they call it a waste. Think about that a minute. They call it a waste. Uh, I just, I says, man, you know how, you know, they were, you know, some of the disciples were doing that, Judas especially, because he had the bag, he was a treasurer, and, and he was selfish, and he was stealing from the bag, Jesus said, and he was a thief. So he didn't care for the poor, he just wanted his hands in the, in the, in the till. But you know, Mary, she seized the moment. You know, that never happened after, and it never happened before. She seized the moment. She was, he was on his way to Jerusalem, okay, to be crucified. But she says, I'm going to do what I could. I, you know, I'm going to miss him. I won't be able to be there. And uh, so I'm going to serve him by anointing his head with this, the oil that I took a lifetime to save for. She d certainly did what she could, didn't she? She seized the the moment. We're going to get a little bit more on that a little bit later. So, when the opportunity presents itself, Mary took advantage of it and, exper and experienced a once-in-a-lifetime blessing. You see, once in a lifetime, it'll never happen again. And it happened then. You know, it's never a waste to serve the Lord. You see, I think so many people think, you know, you send your kid off to college and suddenly he gets saved and then all of a sudden he's called in the ministry and some parent says, don't waste your life because they think serving the Lord is a waste of your life. The implication for us is clear this evening. When the Spirit of God speaks to our hearts, that is the, uh, the time to step up and serve God. Too often we miss out on those special moments of service that Jesus, when we ignore the impulses of the leadership of the Holy Spirit, that is why the Bible warns us to be careful, thus we quenched the Spirit of God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. 
You know, I believe Mass and Baptist Temple is at a, at a crossroads right now. I believe we're in a preposis. We need to seize the moment, Christians, in this church. I see God moving. I see the Holy Spirit moving in the hearts of believers here in this place. We need to seize the moment and, and get behind this pastor, amen, because I believe he's, he's God's man for the hour. And we need, to, we need to do all we possibly can to help him and so that Mass and Baptist Temple will, will grow and flourish, not, not in the ministries of Pastor Cummins, but in the ministries of Pastor Butler, amen? And we need to get behind him, amen, as our pastor. He's given his heart to this place, and uh, he wants. And we need to give all what all whatever capacity God has for you and I, we need to serve God and love Jesus. Because the only way you can serve Jesus today is through the local church. You know that, right? You haven't done anything for the Lord Jesus Christ unless you do it through the local church. How many times have we ignored the impulses of the Spirit and missed the opportunities to serve the Lord? What the Lord is seeking in those people who have surrendered everything they have, everything they are, and everything they hope to be to the will of the Lord. He is looking for people who will assume the place of servants before Him. God is looking for those who merely respond when He speaks to them. And that's through the Word of God, by the way. And He's looking for those about whom He can say, they have done what they could. Thirdly, she, the, uh, she has done what she could in the area of surrender. Now, this is the bulk of the message, amen? Okay, I've already went through my basically three-point outlines because that's what I do, basically a three-point outline. Uh, but the third outline is going to be the bulk of the message. So the sacrifice here that she is doing, we're told that this ointment was very precious. And this broke that box, and she poured that contents on the head of our Lord Jesus, John also tells us that she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped her, his, his feet with her hair. You see, that was quite a sacrifice, wasn't it? This box was actually a flask, okay? Within that flask was a substance called spikenard, all right? It was a red-tinted ointment that is drawn from the plant that grows in India. It was a perfume that was used in embalming process. It was also expensive that only the very wealthy could afford to purchase it. We are told in verse 5 that it was worth about 300 pence. Now, I've got several, now I look at several areas, well, just how much is that? But I would say when it said it's about the average income of that day, I would say the average income today's uh, wages is probably between 30 and 40,000. So that ointment could be worth upwards of thirty to forty thousand dollars. It would take her lifetime to, to to earn or to save up three hundred pence. You see, that's a, a measure of a monetary measure. Now, I would say in today's economy, Mary's gift was probably worth about uh, between three hundred and four hundred to forty thousand dollars. So Mary enters the room, breaks the neck of the flask. She pours some of the ointment on the Lord's head. The rest she pours out on his feet. Then she falls down before Jesus and washes the Lord's feet with her hair. It was an extravagant gift. John says uh, when she did this, the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. John chapter 12, verse 3. This was very costly. Why did Mary do this, you might ask? I think it was an act of extravagant love for the benefit of Christ alone. I believe she loved Him with a pure heart. I really do. And then when she came that day, she broke the flask, anointed the Lord, and wiped His feet with her hair. She was making a statement. In fact, she was making several statements, and we're going to look at several of them tonight. The first statement that she was, uh, was about uh, she was making a statement about her commitment to Him. When she broke the flask, there was no going back. Remember, it was terminal. Once it's open, you better use it. Thirty and forty thousand dollars worth, you better use it. <laughs> Amen. You better use it. Okay. And uh, 
When she came that day, she broke the flask, anointed the Lord, and wiped his feet with her hair. She was making a statement. In fact, she was making several statements. Okay, secondly, she was making a statement about his value to her. She probably saved her entire life to be able to purchase that flask of ointment. She was probably saving for her own burial. When she broke the flask and poured it out, its contents, she was telling Jesus, you mean more to me than anything else in this world. That's what she was saying. Thirdly, she was making a statement about her value to herself. By this act, Mary was demonstrating that Jesus meant more to her than her own reputation. She sacrificed her pride in order to serve him. She was saying, I love you so much that I don't care what anybody thinks about my expression of sacrifice, of love. Two things she did to prove this truth. First of all, only prostitutes were seen in public with their hair down in Bible days. At that moment, she didn't care what anybody thought of her. She merely wanted to express her sacrificial love to our Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, only slaves wash the feet of others. When a person came to her home, you offered water so they could wash their feet. That was a common thing that they did. Or if you had slaves, you had the slaves wash their feet. So Mary took the place of a slave before the Lord Jesus Christ. She humbled herself before Him, and she served Him because she loved Him. Fourthly, she was making a statement about the value of her possessions. To Mary, nothing in this world was valuable to her as Jesus Christ. Jesus was the most valuable person in her life. She loved Him with extravagant love and that everything she possessed was His anyway. I want to give Him all that I have. Possessions meant nothing to her. What a testimony of a, a sacrificial Christian uh, that Mary was, Mary of Bethany. Fifthly, she was making a statement about his worthiness to be worshipped and served. You know, she prostrated herself at his feet. She was worshipping our Lord Jesus Christ. Why did Mary do this? She did it because she was thankful. She was thankful because Jesus was her Redeemer. She had saved her soul from sin, and she was filled with love for that, that act. She also did it because the Lord had raised her dead brother Lazarus from the dead. So she knew that Jesus was God. You see what I'm saying? Not so many people did so. They weren't ready to accept that. Even some of the disciples, even all those things that Jesus did, they still weren't ready to accept. Mary, however, you know, remember the question was asked? He says, oh, yeah, we'll be resurrected you know, at the tomb of Lazarus I'm talking about. Uh, Mary says that, that, yeah, at the end of Judgment Day, we'll be resurrected. Jesus made a comment, and I'm sure she heard it. Mary heard this. I am the resurrection and the life. She believed him. She saw it happen right before her very eyes. Lazarus rose from the dead. When Jesus spoke, she believed. I mean, all the way back to the time when she was at his feet in, in Mary's house, Mary, Lazarus, and and her uh, Martha's house. Her act of love of worship made a big statement concerning who she believed Jesus to be. Now you see, there are four classes of people that were anointed in those days. Um, first of all, kings were anointed, right? Second Kings chapter nine verse three, priests were anointed in those days. In Exodus chapter twenty nine verse seven, prophets were anointed in those days, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16, and the dead were anointed. In John chapter 19, verse 39 and verse 40, Luke chapter 23, verse 56, and Mark chapter 16, verse 1. I believe that by her selfless act, Mary was acknowledging that Jesus is all of those things in her heart. Jesus is all those things. 
He is the King of Kings, isn't He? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, He's the great high priest in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. He is the prophet, Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. He was dead, but is alive forevermore, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. If that doesn't get you excited as a Baptist, nothing will, you see. <laughs> this is what Mary believed about Jesus, and she demonstrated her surrender to Him as all those things by her act of love and worship. Mary is more in touch with who Jesus was than was his own disciples. She believed that he was about to die. They did not. Apparently, she knew that his body would not be available to be anointed after the death, so that she did it ahead of time. Amen. No doubt her faith enabled her to see beyond the cross and the tomb to, and, and to a day when Jesus would rise from the dead and occupy the throne of glory in heaven. She was absolutely surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I think there's some reasons why she was that way other than others, because she loved the Word of God. She loved to hear Jesus speak. Now, we could do the same thing today. You know, why does she have such faith? She didn't have the New Testament like we do today, but she had Jesus. Every word, I believe, when she was sitting at His feet, she would just soak in every word and believe everything he said. Then God gives you more knowledge. See, why should God give you any more knowledge if you're not going to study enough and ask him and believe what he's teaching and doing those things? Why should he give you any more knowledge if you're not going to put it to work? I believe Mary put it to work. That's why God gave her more wisdom. She was able to see things even a disciple couldn't see. I think because she loved Jesus and loved the word more than her own life. I believe her faith enabled her to see beyond the cross. Amen. And she can see Jesus in glory. That's why she anointed him. What about you? Are you surrendered to the same level as Mary? Does the life you live now, kneeling before him as absolute Lord and God, when Mary arrived at that place, truly she had done all that she could. Are you there yet? Are there pieces of your life that still remain unsurrendered? Just as Mary broke the box of ointment so that every drop could be extracted, let us break our lives on the altar so that he might extract every last drop of glory from us. That is the price of surrender. Now in Mark, back in our text, uh, back in Mark, uh, Jesus it was quite firm here, but I do believe he was grieved. Okay, in Mark chapter, uh, Mark 14, 6 says this, And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. Now, if Jesus says the good work, it's a good work. Amen? And uh, so I, there's no question there. I think it is clear that from this statement that the Lord's heart was grieved by the attitude of these men, Mary was given extravagant love, and they have given him nothing. I think there was a little jealousy there, you see. I think there was, you know, did any of them give all they have? They could have. But she did it, and she proved it, didn't she? That was a statement she made. I'm going to give it all to my Lord Jesus Christ because I love him more than anything else in this world. That's why she was able to be surrendered. Only surrendered people will do that. Love the Lord Jesus Christ more than anything else this world has to offer. Mary gave him sacrificial love, and they have given him nothing. She gave him the best she had, and they are attacking her for simply loving on Jesus, anointing his head with, with the most costly oil in the world. They looked at her gift, they called it, a waste. Now Jesus comes back and says, you know, not that we're not to take care of the poor, you know, but uh, she did what she could because she seized the moment, didn't she? People gave themselves to all kinds of pursuits in life, don't we? Some give themselves to money and people call them success. Some give themselves to sports and they become athletes and, and people call them heroes. 
Some give themselves to politics and are called great civic leaders. Some give themselves to academics and people talk about how wonderful uh, they are because they're intellectual. But you let a talented young man or woman give themselves to a life of service of the Lord Jesus Christ and people will say, what a waste. You see. Jerry Vines and the dean of Mercer College, he says this, I have reached a conclusion that no matter what you do in life, if you do not do it for the glory of God and to honor the Lord Jesus, it is a waste of time. It's a waste of money and energy. And as the poet says, only one life will soon pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. I don't care how much money you make, how much education you get, how much you do for the people around you, or anything else you want to name, if you do not do what you're doing for the glory of God, it means nothing. It is a waste. That truly is a waste. So what does Paul have to say about it? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, uh, verse 31, it says, Whether therefore ye eat, drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Verse 7 in our text says this, For if ye have the poor with you always, then whensoever ye will, will may do good, do them good, but me ye have not always. You know what Jesus is saying there? Seize the moment. He's saying this is a moment in time. This may not ever happen again in the future. It may only happen once in a lifetime. In this case, once in the entire human race. One time! And she seized that moment because she was Holy Spirit filled. She loved the Lord. You know, that could be reenacted in the lives of born again believers over and over and over again if we just simply be Holy Spirit filled and be surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we could do the same thing when that time comes. I believe we're here now in Massive Baptist Temple. We're at a preposis right now. We're at a moment in time that we can see a tremendous growth if we just all surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, just like Mary did. Amen? If we do that, I'm telling you, we're not going to have, I guarantee you after this mess, I had had this message done before I, I went to the meeting and heard about the pastor's need for the parsonage. Amen? I did not know, but this, the Lord gave this to me beforehand. In fact, I had, I, I had four weeks to get this message ready. Amen? Because I started a new message right after I preached the, the, the one before. And uh, because I never know when they're going to ask me again. So I had four weeks, so I had, a, I had like 12 or 14 pages of stuff. And so, you know, I figured, well, we'll be here till midnight, but I'll be preaching to myself, amen, because everybody else will be gone at home and, and their first dream, amen, so, <laughs> amen, all right, but anyway, <laughs> um, but see, he says you have the poor always, but she still did what she could for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's always going to be poor, there's always going to be a need, there's always going to be those things, but... We need to rise to the level where it says we need to seize that moment. You see, and I believe that lady seized the moment. There, uh, uh, Mary of Bethany did. She simply is saying, uh, the poor, basically Jesus is only saying, um, the poor you always are, will be there, but she knew that Jesus is going to the cross to die for sins and sinners. She took advantage of an opportunity and was afforded that she gave him sacrificial love and worship. She saw the need. She saw it happening. They were at a, an, uh, at a party. Uh, I believe they were probably uh, serving there. You know, Mary, uh, Martha, and Lazarus was at uh, this, uh, uh, this leper who was healed. Amen. They were at the party. They were invited. They were probably helping out. And uh, so Mary comes in, you know, and uh, she knew Jesus was going to be there. So it is with us. These lives we have are fleeting at best. We must learn to seize those moments when we are given opportunities to serve the Lord. When the moment presents itself to witness, to give, to serve Him, 
Don't waste the moment. Give him sacrificial love that he is due. When you have the means and opportunity to give to the Lord's work, don't waste the opportunity. Soon our lives will be over. The Bible challenges us to seize the moment. Look with me in John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, uh, verse, uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4 says this, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. You see, and then the other one is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Ephesians 5, 16 uh, says this. Verse 16 says this, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's why we need to seize the moment. And we need to, when opportunity knocks, and it's knocking here at Massa Baptist Temple, we need to take advantage of that. You see, seize the moment. It may not ever happen again. And then it, when the Lord blesses, you know, let's say 10 years down the road, we may see that building packed over there in the main auditorium. Amen. Amen. That's not impossible. It just takes surrender. It just takes seizing the moment. And we're there right now. Amen. We're the, I feel the Holy Spirit leading in many folks here today. We're excited about what, what's going to take place here. We have God's man in charge. We, have, we need to support him. And, uh, and we do that because, you know, Pastor, I know him for a long time. <laughs> Amen. And he was in my, in my classes. And, uh, and uh, he's always demonstrated to me a very spiritual man. We need to get behind him. Amen. And I, it looks as though we are. Amen. Praise the Lord for the Christian school. Isn't that right? We seize the moment. You know, that time was coming. And it could have been, it would, we're talking days, Pastor Butler could have said, we have to close the Christian school. But it didn't happen because Christians uh, uh, stepped up and seized the moment and gave. And we gave almost twice as much that was requested. Not quite twice as much, but quite a bit more, right? quite a bit more than was requested. That's why I cannot turn down opportunities to preach the Word of God that's why uh, we should be faithful in the house of God. That's why we should be active in the ministries of our church. That's why we need to be at Sunday school. That's why we need to come in to prayer meetings. That's why we need to support our youth ministry. That's why we need to back the church with our presence, our prayers, our time, and our treasure. The day will come we will not have opportunities that we have right now so i say as a preacher let's seize the moment amen seize the moment because there may not ever be another time or opportunity to do so mark chapter 14 verse 8 uh, says that she had done what she could and um, there's a lot that she could not do also okay and then there, this is what that she could do okay jesus was in a hurry to get to jerusalem amen he had to, he had to get up there so he can uh uh, do what he came to do, to die for the sins of all mankind. Uh, she, she had a flask of extens expensive ointment. Uh, she was saving it for herself, but she chose that moment to take uh, what she did and had used it for the glory of God. There's a powerful lesson here for the saints of God tonight. We cannot do everything, but we must learn to take what we have and do what we can now, that doesn't mean minimally. When you say you can, that means you do the very maximum you could possibly do in this life because you love the Lord. That's what it means you did what you could. See, some people say, well, I did what I could. Well, what they really meant is I minimized it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's not what that means in that passage of Scripture. I can't give everything to the church needs, but I can give my tithes and offerings for the Lord to use in the, this local body. Do what you can. You can't do it all. But there are some things you can. Pray. Witness. Work. Give. Be faithful. Read your Bible. Support the church. Help your neighbor. Teach a Sunday school. 
Do what you can. By the way, you won't be able to do those things. Uh, you won't be able to do those things you do now forever. If you're being faithful, you're not going to do it forever. See, it's going to end one day. One of these days, I'm going to die. I'll preach my last sermon, pray my last prayer, and render my last service to Jesus in this church. When that day comes, I want him to be able to say about me, he did what he could. Verse 8, Jesus came aforehand to anoint the body to the burying. Jesus had been telling his disciples that he was going to the cross to die for the sin of mankind, but they never believed him. They doubted him until, they were, uh, until after he was risen again. Did you know that? Many of them really believed after he resurrected. Then they were on fire and turned the world upside down. Amen. Acts chapter 2. Amen. I, I'm glad for that. Mary's story will be retold everywhere the gospel would be preached. For over 2,000 years, that statement has been proven true. For 2,000 years, people have been motivated to give by Mary's sacrificial gift to Jesus. For over 2,000 years, people have been blessed, challenged, and stirred by what this one woman did. God's teaching us that everything that represents true service to Him will never be forgotten. See, this is going to be a memorial to her, as Jesus says there in verse 9. It says this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Wherefore, this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also what she hath done shall be spoken of her for a memorial of her. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you once again for what you're going to accomplish in the lives of, of, of men and women here in this place. I pray, Lord, we would uh, take this time and seize the moment and step up, Father. I pray, Lord, before it's eternally too late, help us uh, take them on. Let's redeem the time, Father, because we only have one. We only have one life. Help us not to waste it. Help us be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, all the needs will be met in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand with our heads bowed. Every eye closed. I'm just going to ask a question. I know I'm in a Wednesday night crowd, and generally we're all born again. But I would like to see a raise of hand. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you know that for sure, can you raise your hand? It's really good to see that. You can put them down. That's all the questions I'm going to ask tonight. But Mary did what she could, and she was a, a, a rewarded accordingly. Have you done what you could? Are you doing what you can? Are you giving uh, our Lord demonstrations of extravagant worship? Has he spoken to you about this matter? I know he's spoken to me about it. I want to give all to glory and worship and praise he's due. You can do that in your own life. Won't you do that tonight? I challenge you tonight to look how you're serving him and how you are loving him. Is there room for improvement? If he has spoken to your heart at any level, come to him now as we have an invitation. Won't you come tonight? Come tonight. Uh, you know, realize who Jesus really is. You say, well, Brother Patterson, I do know what he is, but, well, let me ask you this. Are you surrendered? Are you totally surrendered? Are you willing to give him everything like Mary of Bethany did? What a life. What an example. Amen. Won't you come tonight? The altar's full. altar's open. It's open for you. Won't you come tonight? Amen. Well, I, um, I hope I encourage you tonight. Uh, I'm telling you, I did not plan, I did not know any of the needs that we had about the parsonage, but I tell you what, we need to make sure we can do what we could, just like Mary of Bethany did. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, that little bit's going to bring unity in our church. That unity is important because that's when God starts blessing. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, once again, thank you for this time we have tonight, Father, that we heard your word. I pray, Lord, that it was a blessing to them to hear about the life of Mary. 
And that, Father, we can, we can learn from her and her example. And I want to thank you for what you're going to accomplish in the lives of us who do want to do those things and do what we could, as she did. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.